Hi folks, Marty here. I'm glad you could join me for today. Um, if you remember uh, in our last lesson, um, we took a, a little farmhouse and we painted it in kind of spring, summer kind of a feel to it. What I want to do today is try this but with more autumn -y colors. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just, uh, I've done a tracing. Um, if you remember last week um, when we did that, how to trace properly. Um, so what I've done is taken a quick um, impression of that and I'm going to just take my pencil here and fill in the gaps. So I'm not going to do too much regarding these trees, just a, a bit of an outline, roughly where I want things to be. Okay, so I don't, uh, I don't want um, too much detailed um, pencil work here. I want to keep it um, pretty loose. And then before I had um, you know like stepping stones here, what I might do is actually just this time I might create a wee path here, something like that. So this uh, path will lead the eye up into the, the picture here. Okay, I think that's all the detail we need. Um, so what I'm gonna do now, um, as you see by my palette here, I have a lot of uh, colors uh, left from the last time. Um, I'm not gonna wash that down completely. I'm gonna keep those colors cause I'll, I'll need them for for some of my darks. So what I'll do is I'll I'll concentrate in this area here. So I want this to be uh, an autumn looking picture. So I'll get my sky color mixed up. And I'm gonna do this a wee bit of a mixture of a uh, wet and dry. So I'll, I'll kind of put in where I want the the blue of the sky to be. So I'm not wetting the page as I normally would. So I've got a bit of blue there. And then what I'll do is I'll take one of my warm colors here and I'll start to where I want the clouds to be. I'm just pushing that in there until it it um, touches the blue there. And then I'm gonna go into my light red here. I'm going to drop that in, just add a wee bit of warmth to those clouds there. Just going to bring it down to the roof of that little farmhouse. I'll just soften this area here. I'll just bring that down. I'll end up uh, painting over the top of these anyway. 
but it gives me gives me something to work on. Maybe just drop a wee bit more color in there here and there. See how I'm just kind of scumbling it in there with the brush. And then this is the area where that grass bank is going to go. So what I'm doing is I'm just softening it up with clean water. Because I don't want that to um, give me a hard edge that I'll have to deal with later. And then I'm just kind of taking the excess off my brush. And then I'm just touching it here and there. And what that does is just lifts up any excess water I have. And then with the tissue again, I'll just soften soften where that's going to be there. Because I don't want that interfering with the, with the walls of the cottage here. Okay, I'm happy with that. So I will just dry that off now. Okay, so that's that dried off. So what I want to do is um, paint some nice autumnal trees around this um, farmhouse just to make it uh, stand out. It gives it a bit of a frame. So I'll get a few colours mixed up. I'll get some more of that red, which worked quite well. A bit of yellow ochre into it. And I'll maybe clean this well here. I'll just drag some yellow into that, some of that orange. And a bit more red in here. Okay, so what I'll do is I'll switch to a different size brush. I'll, this is, you can either use a 10 or a 12, something like that. And I'll get the old trusty rigger there as well. Okay, so what I want to do here, um, I want to get my wee spritzer. I want these trees to be kind of soft, so I'm going to just get another wee spray up here. It will allow the paint just to drop on there. I'm kind of doing it with a bit of a hit and miss kind of an attitude. And then get down to the the, the undershot of this um, the tree. I'm just going in with a bit of cobalt blue there. And what I can do with my wee rigger here is I can pull out some some branches. That's just going to peek through those wee. Um, gaps in the trees okay and then what I'll do is I'll go into that blue a wee bit more somewhere that light red and then I'll just drop that in there in fact I can even throw a bit of yellow into it give it a bit of a green tint there so look like there's other trees and so on uh, in front of that main tree there And then you can just throw the odd wee bit of blue here and there just to kind of help to break it up a wee bit. Okay, I'll do that. And if you're kind of happy with it, you can go ahead and just um, dry it off if you want it to freeze like that. Other than that, it'll continue to merge and blend. So we're just going to dry that off. Okay, that's that dried. So what I want to do now is uh, try that again over here now. And I give it a wee spray just to soften that up. And this time I'm going to go into my yellow colour. Maybe add a little bit of ochre to that. Just drop it in here and there. Just add it blend and bleed in there.
And then what I can do is grab a bit of that light red color and just throw it in here. Maybe a bit more. Let's get down towards the bottom of that. Okay, so we're kind of, um, we drew a few tree trunks and stuff in there, so I want to keep an eye on them that I don't lose them when I'm doing this here. So let's let that um, settle for a wee second there. What I want to do is, I want to put some water here and I want to drop in the foreground a little bit. So I'm taking some of that yellow. I'm going to add a bit of blue or even a green to it. got a little bit a little bit muddier than what I'd like so I'm just gonna get the old tissue there and just rub that off a bit and go into my ochre this time So I want this to be kind of loose in the foreground here. So what I'm going to do is use my brush and just touch that here and there. So I want uh, to do something along this area here. What I might do is um, bring in a, a blue kind of colour. Just watching your colours don't get muddy on you, okay? So I'm going to take um, this blue here. Maybe add a, a little alizarin crimson to it. And then a bit of yellow ochre. Just kind of drop it down here, let that kind of blend in there.
What I'm doing here is I'm just using a damp brush. I'm just kind of lifting, lifting some of that out. Okay, so that's my underwash done. Okay, so I'm just gonna concentrate on the, the farmhouse now. So I'll want to make something that looks, looks like the color stonework. So what I'll do is I'll, I'll take a bit of that ochre there, maybe add a bit of um, burnt sienna into it. This is just going to be um, like our underwash. Okay, and then I'll just pop that on here. I can actually do the whole house with this and I can come back later and then put the shadow in. So will make that all stand out a bit better. What you can do is throw a little bit of color into that. Just start kind of blending. Okay, I'm gonna just soften up that edge a little there, the bottom. Okay, what I want to do now is uh, mix up a colour that'll give me a bit of a shadow. I'll usually go for my um, cobalt blue and a little alizarin crimson at this point. And then drop a little bit of my yellow ochre in. So this will give me a, a nice translucent color and then this is the side of the house I'm going to put in shadow And for that roof, I'm going to add a put a darker colour in for that because this uh, part of the house will be in shade. Just see this is a bit of an undercoat. And because it's our shadow colour, we'll want a bit of shadow around the front of that house underneath the, the roof there like that. I 
what I'm going to do is I'm going to pretend that the light is just hitting the top of that roof there like that. And then what I'll do is just bleed a wee bit more colour into that to give it a wee bit of variation. I'll just dry this off now. Okay, what I want to do now is mix up a slightly stronger colour. Okay, this is going to be where the doorways are and so on. And the windows, so I'm just going to give out the impression that um, there's a bit of panelling going on here and so on. Do this doorway here. And then maybe put a wee bit more shadow under that. I'll do is throw a wee bit of brown into that and um, I'm going to do a little bit of brickwork, nothing too much, just to give the, the impression, a couple of bricks here and there. Better just indicating this rather than overstating it. Okay, it's too dark. You can just give it a wee touch with a tissue like that. So what you can do now is a bit of smoke coming out of that chimney. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put this bit of card here. And I'm going to just give it a little touch like that. And then get a nice clean brush. And get some of your white gouache. You want this to be nice and thick, okay? So you want it to look like there's smoke coming out of here. And then what you can do is touch a wee bit of that dark stuff there and then just drop that in here. So just gives that impression that um, the fire's lit, nice log fire or even a bit of turf burning on it. Gives that lovely wee Irish kind of flavour to it. Okay, I think that's fine. So I'll just dry that off now. So another wee touch up. Okay, so we're just um, looking to put in a wee bit of detail here and there. I want to keep this kind of loose and impressionistic. So what I'm going to do... Um, I'm going to take some of that light green there. I'm just going to drop that up here. Just to make it look like there's a bit more some grass and so on up here. So it's uh, an already made up green there. Um, what I'm going to do is add a wee bit of, wee bit of ochre into it. So it's not so luminous looking. And maybe do a few little hedges and so on here. Just at the edge of this path.
So if you've put um, if you've put your paint down, it's just too too runny, or it's gathering the bottom. Just touch it with the tissue. Uh, that you know, um, touch it with the tip of the brush into the tissue. Okay, and then. A wee wiggles here and there. Nothing too much. It's too dark. Just got a wee touch with that tissue. It's just to give it a bit of an impression, really. And then at the top of those little bushes here, I'm just going to touch with a tissue just to take that um, blocky look off it. And I'll dry that off now. Okay, so what I want to do now is um, mix up my shadow color again. At this stage, you should be getting used to some of these um, color combinations. So, cobalt. And then a little bit of alizarin and crimson. Don't forget you can try this out on your your bit of scrap paper just to get the right combination you want. Do you want it too blue? You don't want it too purple. Um, and because these colors are very translucent. I'll give you that lovely see-through shadows. I might put that on here, maybe. So the light's coming from this direction here. I want the shadows to be in about here. And give it a wee bit this direction as well. Put a shadow up here. Okay, I'm kind of liking the um, the simplicity of this one. I don't want to go into it with too much detail. Sometimes you start off with a plan of how you want the thing to go. And then it just takes on a life and a turn of its own. It, um, it's a bit more pleasing. And what I might do is uh, take a bit of that green there and give these covers up here a wee bit of a touch. See, I'm not filming in them, but I'm just leaving gaps there, just because it's that nice, kind of rustic look to it. Take a wee bit of that as well and pop it over here. Make it look like there's shutters here, window shutters as well there. Okay, so a little person in the, the foreground here. So what might just is. chat in. So whether it looks like a person or it could be another door or whatever, um, just a lead, leave something to the imagination. Just break up the color wee bit. What I'm going to do is just take a wee bit of that dark colour and then if it needs a wee bit of shadow on those 
chimney pots without overdoing it, just keep it very loose, remember. So here we are in the foreground. If you remember the last few weeks we've been we've been uh, working towards um, how to put um, areas of interest in the foreground. Um, got to be careful with a picture like this because you know obviously you've got your road leading up and it so so the information that you want people to see is really the center area. Um, so we'll just be very careful about um, what we do here. Maybe just a few wee kind of strokes. Because you're coming in the autumn, um, you're not going to have all those lovely flowers and blooms. So you got to just keep it all nice and loose there. I'm going to go into one of these browns here and just pull up some twigs and so on. Just a couple of wee, couple of wee birds now. See why that's quite, quite thick looking there. It's because there's just not enough pigment on the. So dip into some of my dark colours here. I want that to be, kind of creamy. So you can. Just dab it with the old tissue, just to take it out if it's if it's not working for you. Brought a lot a bit sharper, I think. I think I'll keep this one simple actually. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'll just get the old signature on. So that's um, just very simply done, and I've decided just to keep that nice and simple in the foreground. So have a wee go at that, and um, just try those nice warm autumny colours. And until next time, keep painting, and I'll see you soon.